Okay, I'm still here. I thought I'd do an update. Um, today is the 4th of May. I have been locked in this apartment since the 1st of April. It's been a month and four days. When I say locked, I mean uh, we're not allowed to go out of our compound at all. Um, I am allowed to go downstairs to throw away the rubbish, pick up a delivery if I have one, um, but that's about it. Um, we have, have not been able to go shopping to buy like even food or anything like that. I've not been able to, I've not been able to exercise or even go for a proper walk. Um, and the date of the reopening uh, is not really anywhere in sight. That's, they have been postponing it over and over and over. Last time I checked, it said we were we might reopen on the 11th of this month. But then again, um, they also said that they were going to open after five days originally. So you, you can see, you know, how this goes. My beard is very long. Um, and... Uh, there are some uh, news about what the situation is like. I'm going to read some of them. This is from the usual Shanghai uh, Daily, Shanghai Zhebao Shine. And I'm going to quote, published on the, the 27th of last month. Districts in Shanghai which achieve zero community transmission a first will allow the residents to move around in limited areas. Local authorities announced on Wednesday as the city's, uh, the city's daily COVID infection uh, numbers maintain the downward trend. A limited number of residents will be allowed to conduct minimal activities in restricted areas in those districts, according to uh, Zhao Dan Dan. The residents in other districts will remain under coronavirus prevention measures, including static management, massive screening, overall epidemiological investigation and wide disinfection. So this is where we're at. Um, that is to say, basically, when and if I am allowed out of my compound, I will be free, which by free, I mean I will be able to conduct limited activities with a limited number of people in, restric in restricted areas. And it goes on. This is from the publication Smart Shanghai, published on the 28th of April. Uh, the article entitled Today in COVID five in COVID five things that show it might be getting better, and I'm just gonna extract some excerpts from it. China was aiming for zero COVID. Over the course of this thing, zero COVID has been adjusted to dynamic zero COVID, and then later later on into societal zero COVID, which in this context has been explained as zero COVID cases outside of quarantine. Now, it's not very clear to me if you have to test positive in order to be taken into a quarantine facility in the first place, how can there be cases inside the quarantine but not outside the quarantine? It's not very clear, but to me anyway. Just this past Wednesday, the city announced a few updates that paint a clearer picture of how life after the lockdown could look like. One announcement brings attention back to the health code. This is the the QR code that you gotta show everywhere you go in China. The free color code that was always green for everyone before the lockdown. Now it's supposed to incorporate more data and layers. One phrase specifically jumps out from the official announcement. A code might turn yellow if someone's PCR test is overdue, which indicates that in the future we'll have to follow a strict test routine to keep the code green. The mention of changes to the QR code system should be a positive sign. Should be, should it be? That the things will get to a more tech-based and personalized solution. Okay. In another announcement, a list of over 500 PCR testing locations was released. Sites around the city where anyone can get a PCR test on the spot. Pictures from the interviews show that the temporary locations have already been put in place. 
A city with all of these testing locations has us thinking of a situation where we're allowed outside of our apartments and districts, provided we've got an up-to-date negative test result on our phone, which are now obtainable everywhere. Oh, okay, they're obtainable everywhere. So I think that's great. They're obtainable everywhere. Should be easy, right? It's already been some weeks that we've learned that we need a lovely QR code, green QR code, sorry, to get into basically anywhere. Malls, cultural sites, restaurants, offices, retail businesses, everything. And the article goes on, but that's the, the, the gist of you know what I wanted to say. So what does it mean for me? Uh, it means that I've decided to leave. Um, it's not been an easy decision at all, but, uh, from what I've just told you, it you know I've been locked here for as I said a month, four days, and no end in sight or in sight of any kind of uh, you know normality. Now uh, leaving uh, is not easy. As I said in one of my previous videos, uh, there is hardly any transportation to the airport, and of course I'm locked in this compound. However. Um, what it means is basically you need to get a permit from your uh, community leaders, community committee, neighborhood committee, whatever you want to call it, a permit to allow you outside of the gate so that you can then make your way to the airport. On the way to the airport, I will need to get a PCR test done because in order to enter the airport, I will need to show a negative PCR test done within 48 hours and a negative antigen test done within 24 hours. Um, now they don't allow, they don't accept tests as far as I know done within my community so I will have to go to the hospital first in the morning to get a PCR test and then head to the airport. Now how am I supposed to get to all these places you might ask given that there's no transportation? Um, I managed to get in touch with a driver there's a few, uh, there's a very few people, a selected number of people who have a special permit to drive around. I don't know why they have this permit and other people don't, don't ask. But um, he's a private driver, so it's a private, I don't think he's a, he's a, he's a, he does it for, for a living, what I mean is just a dude with a car and he's offering to drive people around for a fee, um, which was not cheap. So he's supposed to uh, pick me up tomorrow in the morning take me to the hospital to do the test and then drive me to the airport. And if my flight is not cancelled uh, by then, then I will be able to leave. Apparently there's no food and no water, there's nothing at the airport, nothing is open. So I might have to take with me something to eat and some water and fingers crossed I won't be stuck at the airport. I've heard stories of people who apparently have been living at Pudong Airport for a while because the flight got cancelled. And the interesting thing is, once your flight get cancelled, once you leave your flat, you are not allowed back in because of this lockdown quarantine situation. So today I got my permit, uh, which allows me to leave officially my building. Uh, but it does say, after I leave, I will not be coming back into this compound. So, um, at least for as, as long as the situation carries on, which could be months. So, uh, yeah, once I leave, I'm on the street. If I can't make the flight, then uh, I'll have to improvise. So I will be uh, posting some updates tomorrow as I go about this entire process. Uh, hopefully I will make it um, to the airport and I will be able to fly out of Shanghai. I will uh, let you I will let you know. I'm gutted. I'm gonna have to leave my keyboard here. Um, I'm really, really gutted about that. But uh, Unfortunately, I can't take it with me. I have been working on an orchestral piece, uh, which I haven't posted yet because orchestral music takes a lot of time. I am normally very fastidious with it. I try to make sure that uh, it sounds as you know as good as it can sound. So you know, apologies if I haven't posted a lot of music. I have been quite busy sorting out all of this situation. So yes, thanks for watching, and I'll uh, see you later.